Welcome to our Hebrew 131 lecture on the Hebrew construct chain. In English, we use the preposition of to show a modifying relationship between two nouns. For example, when we say the son of the man, we modify the noun son with the noun man. In Hebrew, the same meaning is created by placing two nouns next to each other. When two nouns are placed next to, to get, together next to each other, they create what we call a construct chain. The pattern of a construct chain will always be a noun of a noun if the absolute noun is not definite. Notice that I have uh, the first noun in red and the second noun in blue. Watch for that pattern. For example, you can see up here, sun is in red, the man is in blue. The son of the man is the construct phrase. All right, a construct chain has two types of noun. The final noun in the chain is the absolute noun. That's the one I always put in blue. And the noun preceding the absolute or final noun are construct nouns. For example, bayit ish, a house, that's the construct noun, of a man, that's the absolute noun. While there can be multiple construct nouns, there is only one absolute noun, and it's always the final noun in a construct chain. So we could say, here in our example we say, a house of a man. What if we wanted to, to, to say, a table of a room of a house of a man? Man would still be the absolute noun. All the other nouns would be construct nouns. Consider the following. Only the absolute or final noun in a construct chain can have a definite article. If the absolute noun has the definite article, all preceding nouns in the chain are also made definite automatically, even though they do not have the definite article. The pattern of a construct chain will always be the noun of the noun, if the noun is definite. So, for example, in our example we talked about a second ago, if I said, in the house, or rather, on the table of the house of the man of the city. Um, city would be, and we could say um, ha'ir and make city definite. Automatically, all the other nouns in that whole construct chain are definite, even though they don't have a definite article. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, note the following. Construct chains will never combine definite and indefinite nouns, such as a noun of the noun, or the noun of a noun. So we can't say a man of the city. It has to be the man of the city. And we can't say the man of a city. We would have to say a man of a city. So all of the nouns in a construct chain will either be a, indefinite, or else they will have um, the last noun, the, the absolute noun, the blue one, will have the definite article, and then all the rest of the nouns in the construct chain will be definite, even if they don't have the definite article. All right, in cases where we want to say a noun of the nouns, for example, a man of the city, or in the example we have here, the voice of a prophet, in these cases, the preposition lamed is sometimes used with asher, and all the nouns have the absolute noun form. For example, hakol asher lanavi, the voice of a prophet. Notice that the voice has the definite article, and then we have asher, and then we use le, ne, the preposition le, um, combined with Navi to say the voice of a prophet. Now that's how we've learned so far before we learned construct nouns. That's how we translated things. So we have the voice um, which is to a prophet. Okay, and then we would come up with an idiomatic translation and say the voice of a prophet. All right. All right, let's look at a few examples here. Here we have the king, which is the construct noun, of the people, which is the absolute noun. 
Notice that king does not have the definite article, even though our translation does. Remember that as long as the absolute noun has the definite article, then all the nouns in the construct chain can be definite. So Melakaam can be the king of the people. The next example, the voice of Moses, Ko Moshe. Notice that voice is definite, the voice of Moses. That's because Moses is the absolute noun, and Moses is a particular person, place, or thing. Uh, that's the same thing as saying um, the people. Moses is definite. It's not any person, it's Moses. And so by, by that definition, uh, the voice of Moses gets to be definite. So the voice gets to be definite too. Our next example, the son of the man, um, Ben Haish. Notice that Ben is made definite in our example because Haish is definite. We have the definite article here, and therefore, because the definite um, article is on the absolute noun, then all the nouns in the construct chain are made definite. So now we have the son of the man. Construct nouns may have a different form from absolute nouns. The chain that occurs is primarily due to a reduction or loss of stress in a noun when placed in a construct chain. Sometimes a makef is used between a construct noun and an absolute noun. The appearance of a makef indicates a complete loss of stress in the construct noun. In other words, your vowels might change around on your construct nouns because there's a root. Um, a problem similar to vowel reduction occurring here. There's a loss of stress. The way you say the word is a little different and the vowels change to show that. Let's look at some examples. Or actually, we'll look at how we um, put adjectives in with a construct noun. Adjectives that modify either the absolute noun or one of the construct nouns will always follow the construct chain. For example, by eat, Nashim Yafot, a house of beautiful women. Notice that Yafot, the adjective, is feminine plural. That helps us to know that Yafot is describing the women and not the house. Now look at our next example. Bayit Nashim Yafe, a beautiful house of women. Yafe is masculine singular and therefore is describing bayit instead of nashim. Okay, so the adjective will come at the end of the construct chain and you usually can tell which noun it's modifying based on context and based on whether the noun is um, masculine plural, feminine plural, feminine singular, or masculine singular. So you look back at the, set, the construct chain to find a match. Nashim is feminine plural, even though it has the irregular im ending, and so the, the adjective modifying it also has the feminine plural ending, in this case the ot ending. All right, because the adjective is not adjacent to the noun it modifies, some ambiguity can arise in translation. Notice this example. In the earlier examples, it was obvious which noun the adjective went with. Here, it's not so obvious. We have Ma'ashe Hamelek Hara. Excuse me. The deed of the evil king or the evil deed of the king. Hara is masculine singular, but then so are both nouns. The construct noun is masculine singular, the absolute noun is masculine singular. You have to rely on context to decide which of these nouns it modifies. Is it the deed of the evil king or the evil deed of the king? You can choose, just decide which it is based on context and be prepared to defend your choice. All right, an adjective will always match the noun it modifies in both number and gender. We saw those examples on the previous slide. Sometimes this guideline helps resolve which noun should receive the adjective. Sometimes you must rely on context when deciding which noun should receive the adjective. 
Either noun in a construct chain can be plural. Generally, two adjectives will not modify separate nouns. However, two adjectives can modify the same noun. For example, the words of the good and righteous prophet. The adjectives good and righteous follow the construct chain. And both of them either describe the prophet or the wor word. So it's the word of the good and righteous prophet or the good and righteous word of the prophet. Just decide based on context. Construct chains can have a series of nouns. However, construct chains exceeding four nouns are pretty rare. For example, the house of the son of the prophet. Notice that I've made all of those definite. Remember that when the absolute noun is definite, all the nouns get to be definite in the translation. The rulers of Israel and Judah. The wife and son of the king. Notice in this example we have two construct nouns connected by the Vav conjunction and they both are in a chain with the king which is the absolute noun and is definite so now we have the wife and son of the king and you can say the wife and the son of the king or just the wife and son of the king uh, whatever sounds best idiomatically alright the translation of a construct chain can vary from a simple of meaning such as the daughter of the king to the daughter's king. Some instances are better translated as preposition or adjectival phrases. Avoid strict adherence to one translation pattern. For example, so far we've said a son of a priest, like this example, but you can say a priest's son, that's the same thing. The wife of the king or the king's wife. So as you begin to translate more, you'll get more used to that construct phrasing and you can stop saying the whatever of the whatever. You can say, uh, instead of a son of a priest, you can say the priest's son. All right, adjectives and participles can appear in a construct chain. The builders of the temple. Beautiful of appearance or beautiful in appearance. Notice that I'm using in here instead of of. In English, that just sounds better. All right. Singular nouns in a construct chain. The spelling of singular nouns in a construct chain will generally vary from the lexical form. Of the two states, absolute and construct, the absolute does not change and the construct does change. The change that occurs in construct nouns are due to the change in the primary stress as the nouns are chained together. So watch out for changes in the valing of a construct noun. We have a few um, rules that apply. Notice in our absolute column here, that's how we're used to seeing these words. But in the construct, notice, for example, the mem of makom has reduced to a schwa. Notice the reduction of the um, comments under the noon to a schwa, and so forth. So you get a little bit of vowel change, but most of the time you can just recognize those words, even though the vowel changed a little. And if you just recognize that it's gone into a construct chain, you should be okay. In construct nouns, a kamatz in a final closed syllable will change to a pata. So for example, yad, the final syllable of yad, since it's a one syllable word, has this kamatz. Notice that it changes to a pata. The same thing happens in thief, ganav, versus ganav, thief of. The construct version, the kamatz, reduces to a pata. So you get just a little bit of a change in those construct nouns uh, from how you would see them spelled in the lexicon or in your vocabulary list. Finally, in construct nouns, a tseri in a final closed syllable generally remains, but sometimes can be replaced by a pata. For example, look at the absolute noun and look at the difference. This tseri has changed to a pata. You can look at further examples in the Lambden textbook on page 70. Hopefully this gives you a good review of our lesson on the Hebrew construct chain. Just remember uh, the basic rules about absolute and construct nouns, and good luck translating.